Emma, a mischievous glint in her eye, decided to blend persuasion with a dash of trickery. First, she appealed to Sumant's vanity. She reminded him of how handsome he looked with his long hair, hinting that the elegant drape of a sari could further accentuate his charm. She described the vibrant colours and delicate fabrics, weaving a tapestry of words that painted a picture of him as a mythical being dressed in moonlight. Next, she subtly sowed the seeds of curiosity. She casually mentioned an old family legend associated with a magical sari, claiming it bestowed wisdom and strength upon the wearer. Sumanth, intrigued by the prospect of uncovering a family secret, found himself cautiously receptive to the idea, but Emma knew mere words wouldn't be enough. So one scorching afternoon, while the rest of the family was out, she sprang her trap. With a twinkle in her eyes, she announced she had a spa day planned for Sumanth, complete with fragrant oils, soothing music and a surprise makeover. Intrigued and slightly wary, Sumanth found himself surrendering to his sister's playful whims. The spa session started innocently enough, with lavender oil massages and cucumber facial masks. But slowly, Emma started weaving her magic. She introduced him to the world of silks, draping a soft, shimmering fabric around his shoulders, letting its cool touch send shivers down his spine. She experimented with different hairstyles, finally tying his long hair in a sleek bun that mirrored the elegant knots of a sari palu. As the final touches were applied, Emma unveiled the masterpiece, a stunning midnight blue sari with silver embroidery that shimmered like moonlight on water. Sumanth stood frozen, unsure whether to laugh or run. Emma, sensing his apprehension, offered him a hand mirror. Gazing into it, Sumanth gasped. He didn't see a clumsy man in borrowed clothes, but a figure of unexpected grace and quiet power. Diwali arrived, and with it, the inevitable moment of truth. Sumanth, draped in his midnight blue sari, descended the stairs like a celestial vision. The room fell silent, then erupted in a cacophony of reactions. Emma and Olivia beamed with pride, but Charlotte's lips were pursed in disapproval. The extended family, a mix of curious aunts and judgy uncles, whispered amongst themselves, casting sideways glances at Sumanth. Sumanth himself stood tall, a mixture of amusement and defiance swirling in his eyes. He felt the weight of tradition tugging at him, but the newfound confidence sparked by Emma's magic shone brighter. He walked into the Diwali celebrations, head held high, his sari rustling like whispered secrets in the cool night air. The evening became a study in contrasts. Some guests offered hesitant compliments, drawn in by the unexpected beauty of Sumanth's attire. Others, blinded by prejudice, hurled snide remarks, muttering about family shame and broken traditions. Sumanth ignored them, focusing on the warmth in Emma's eyes and the silent support of Olivia. As the celebrations subsided, a deep introspection replaced the initial shock. Sumanth, for the first time, questioned the traditions that dictated his life. Why should long hair and a sari be symbols of female subjugation? Could one not embrace femininity without sacrificing masculinity? He glanced at Emma, now studying in India, her life no longer confined by societal expectations. The return to normalcy felt strangely unfamiliar. Sumanth found himself reaching for the soft fabrics of his saris, the comforting weight of tradition now laced with newfound freedom. He started attending cultural events dressed in saris, his presence sparking conversations about gender fluidity and defying stereotypes. Emma, witnessing this unexpected transformation, realised her plan had achieved something far greater than a Diwali prank. She had set in motion a ripple effect, questioning long-held beliefs and paving the way for a future where tradition and expression could coexist in beautiful harmony. Sumanth embraced his femininity like a flower unfurls to the sun. The saris became more than a costume. They were cocoons of confidence, each vibrant drape a declaration of his truth. He adorned himself with delicate jewellery, his long hair braided with flowers or held in place by jewelled clips. In his reflection, he saw not a man in borrowed clothes, but a being of both strength and elegance, a living tapestry woven from tradition and defiance. The initial shock within the family slowly morphed into a hesitant curiosity. Emma, his staunchest supporter, became his bridge to acceptance. She organised cultural gatherings, inviting friends and relatives who embraced diversity. Sumanth's sari-clad presence, initially viewed with raised eyebrows, became a conversation starter, challenging preconceived notions of masculinity and femininity. 
Charlotte, ever the traditionalist, remained the toughest barrier. Yet even she couldn't ignore the joy that lit Sumanth's eyes as he twirled in his saris, the grace with which he carried himself. The whispers at family gatherings gave way to respectful inquiries about his chosen attire. Olivia, always the mediator, played a crucial role, reminding Charlotte of their son's happiness and the changing tides of acceptance in the world. The turning point came on a festive night. Sumanth, dressed in a crimson sari that mirrored the flickering Diaz, performed a traditional dance alongside his sisters. His movements, once confined by societal expectations, now flowed with the fluidity of silk, his steps echoing the rhythm of a changing world. Charlotte, tears glistening in her eyes, finally saw not a son defying tradition, but a child finding his true self. Acceptance wasn't an overnight triumph, but a journey paved with patience, understanding and love. Sumanth saris became a symbol of their evolution as a family, a testament to the fact that love can bloom even in the most unexpected gardens. He emerged as a beacon of hope, not just for himself, but for others who dared to challenge the rigid confines of gender roles. Sumanth's newfound confidence spilled into other aspects of his life. He enrolled in a fashion design course, his saris turning from personal expression to artistic canvas. He poured his soul into each creation, blending traditional weaves with bold contemporary designs blurring the lines between masculine and feminine attire. His saris became a sensation, worn by women who embraced fluidity and men who dared to defy expectations. Olivia, inspired by Sumanth's journey, rediscovered her own artistic passion. She opened a boutique showcasing his designs, its warm embrace welcoming anyone who wished to explore their own sartorial truths. Soon, the boutique became a safe haven, a platform for marginalised voices to find expression through fashion. News of Sumanth's transformation reached beyond their small town. He was invited to fashion shows, interviewed by magazines, and even featured in a documentary exploring gender fluidity in modern India. His message resonated, sparking conversations in living rooms and parliament halls alike, but fame wasn't without its thorns. Social media trolls hurled vitriol, traditionalists clung to their biases, and some family members still harboured unspoken reservations. Yet, Sumanth remained undeterred. He found solace in Olivia's unwavering support, Emma's infectious enthusiasm, and the growing community of kindred spirits who found strength in his story. One day, an invitation arrived that surprised them all. Sumanth was chosen to showcase his designs at Paris Fashion Week, a grand stage for his quiet revolution. He hesitated, unsure if the world was ready for his bold vision, but Emma, ever the motivator, pushed him forward. Go, brother, she said, her eyes alight. Show them the India we know, the India that celebrates diversity. The Parisian runway became Sumanth's battle cry. His models, a diverse range of individuals who defied labels, glided down the catwalk draped in his creations. Saris adorned men with sculpted physiques, Pantsuits hugged women with delicate curves, and everything in between shimmered with the audacity of self-expression. The applause at the end was thunderous, a global acknowledgement of Sumanth's message. Back in India, even the most resistant corners of his family watched the video with hearts softening. Charlotte, tears streaming down her face, finally admitted, maybe tradition isn't about rigidity, but about adapting to who we truly are. Samant's journey had come full circle, from a bewildered boy forced into a tradition he didn't understand to a global icon defying the very definition of it. He wasn't just changing the world with his designs, he was reminding everyone that beauty lies in embracing the spectrum of human experience, in the freedom to be, to wear, to love, without the shackles of labels. His story, whispered from a small town in India, echoed across the globe, a testament to the transformative power of acceptance and the unwavering spirit of finding your own truth, wrapped in the shimmering embrace of a sari. The success of Sumanth's Parisian debut became a double-edged sword. While praise lauded him as a revolutionary icon, whispers of appropriation stung like needles under gilded praise. Accused of exploiting tradition for personal gain, Sumanth found himself adrift in a sea of conflicting opinions. Emma, Ever his anchor, reminded him of their true purpose. We're not about appropriation, she said, her voice firm. We're about bridging the gap. We're showing the world the beauty of fluidity, 
the freedom in breaking away from boxes. Sumanth returned to India with a renewed mission. He started a cultural exchange programme, weaving together the stories of LGBTQ plus communities across the globe through fashion performances and workshops. In rural villages, he met transgender women who had worn saris their entire lives, ostracised by society, yet adorned with the very garment he was critiqued for embracing. Their resilience, their stories of finding solace in tradition, even when tradition rejected them, became his muse. He began incorporating their stories into his designs. Each sari became a tapestry of voices, whispering tales of struggle and triumph, woven with threads of acceptance and defiance. He draped them on men and women, on transgender elders and non-binary youth, each fold a statement of solidarity, a rejection of binaries. His message resonated in hearts beyond the fashion world. Activists saw him as a beacon. Politicians invited him to speak at conferences, and young people found in his saris the courage to express their true selves. Sumanth had become a symbol, not just of fashion, but of inclusivity, of tearing down walls of prejudice brick by brick, adorned in the vibrant defiance of silk. But there was still a lingering question, a gnawing emptiness within. Where did he, Sumanth, fit in this tapestry of identities? Was he a man in a sari, a woman trapped in a man's body, or something altogether different? As he explored the world of gender fluidity, he stumbled upon a concept that resonated deep within his soul, gender queer. In this space, beyond the rigid boxes of man and woman, Sumanth found himself. He embraced the freedom to express himself without labels, to flow between and beyond societal expectations. His saris became even more vibrant, infused with the joyous chaos of his newfound identity. One day, Sumanth held a special fashion show in his hometown. He stood on the runway, not as a man in a sari, but as Sumanth, unlabeled and free. He draped saris on people from all walks of life, creating a living tapestry of acceptance. As the final notes of the music faded, a thunderous applause erupted. Tears streamed down his face, not tears of sadness, but tears of belonging, of finally arriving home in his own skin. Sumanth's story, woven into the fabric of his saris, became a testament to the human spirit's relentless pursuit of self-discovery. It was a story of tradition reimagined, of defying expectations, and ultimately, of finding acceptance not just in the world, but within oneself. His saris, draped on bodies unbound by labels, became not just fashion statements, but whispers of a future where everyone could wear their truth, where beauty bloomed beyond the confines of boxes, where freedom danced in the shimmering folds of acceptance. This wasn't just the end of Sumanth's journey, it was the beginning of a million others. Each thread of his narrative, each rustle of his saris, echoed a message of hope, a promise that someday the world wouldn't need labels to celebrate the rich tapestry of human experience. The world would simply be ready to embrace the beauty of being in all its glorious, fluid and ever-evolving forms. <laughs>